the 2024 Masters, the 50th edition of this fine competition. Every year, it's the best of the best. The Paul Hunter Trophy and the title Masters Champion. No easy draws, not for the faint of heart. For 50 years, there's been battles, centuries, 147s, joy and despair. And all play to the tune of the London Roar. A snooker atmosphere like no other. Many legends have got their hands on the title. A very, very happy Doug Mountjoy. Reardon, Thorburn, Higgins, Davis. Paul Hunter, too. Paul Hunter, ladies and gentlemen. A three-time champion taken from us far too soon. His name immortalised on this famous crystal trophy. Ronnie, of course, leads the way with his seven titles. For the seventh time, he's the Masters champion. But only one of us has managed five in a row. It's nice for us, Scott, to win at Wembley for a change. Here at Alexander Palace, a venue befitting of such a fine group of players. 16 has whittled down to two. He gets a standard ovation from this Ali Pali crowd, and quite right too. Ali Carter and Ronnie O'Sullivan. I'm here to play today, and if you take any liberties and leave me in, this is what I'm going to do who will be crowned the 50th Masters Champion. Good evening, since 1975 there's been so much to love about the Masters Tournament and we are loving our lineup in this, the 50th final in this great event. So tonight, will the GOAT, snooker's Ronnie O'Sullivan and his head spinning record count keep on climbing. On offer tonight, an eighth Masters crown and with it, a 23rd snooker major. Or can Ali Carter, the captain, finally land one of snooker's big three titles after a lifetime of effort both on and off the table? It was Carter who certainly nailed the takeoff this afternoon. So, Ken, the first frame and a very early sign of intent from O'Sullivan. Yeah, O'Sullivan playing uh, with that cavalier attitude, exhibition-esque. Really going for the throat from the off. Carter, ready to trade blows with O'Sullivan. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Aggressive safety shot, splits the pack. Well, that's a message of intent. Yeah, very impressive from Carter, not willing to take a backward step of his own. Superb! That break of 106 put frame two to bed. Frame three then, and Carter in with 43, looking to assert himself in this match, but goes in off just when he didn't want to. Where's the cue ball going? Oh. O'Sullivan pounced, but didn't make enough of it, and Carter took the advantage. O'Sullivan stored, but certainly not shaking, comes back to his brilliant best, a sublime 125. Just when you thought Carter might get to the interval with a 3-1 lead, O'Sullivan pounces to make it two inch. Back after the interval, and important to make a good start. O'Sullivan in first, but not able to capitalise chance to Ali Carter, but what a wonderful break. His eighth century of the tournament, record equaling as well. Wonderful clearance of 122. Into frame six, Carter in force, Ronnie with a chance of a clearance, gets the green off the cushion, plays it left-handed, misses it, leaves it for Carter. Carter now with a two-frame advantage, but misses two pretty easy opening reds. O'Sullivan capitalises and now cuts the deficit just to one. Carter leads 4-3. So into frame eight, Sean, another ultra-aggressive safety shot from Ronnie O'Sullivan that goes wrong this time. He would have snapped your hand off for that two-frame advantage and he will take that advantage into tonight's session. Can Carter hold himself together? That is the burning question. What a final we have in store for us tonight. 
Well, there's no doubt Ali Carter played a massive part in that session this afternoon. It was very brisk. Yeah, it was a wonderful but also fascinating session of snooker. I think everybody that came here this afternoon would have had two, two talking points. A, the fact Ali Carter's playing great, but also how open and attacking Ronnie O'Sullivan was. The problem with that open a play is that you can leave yourself open to the counterpunch, and Ali Carter got three, great five, three jabs in. It was fantastic. Absolutely brilliant he was, and his scorer. He's actually been the best scorer all week, hasn't he? So when those mistakes are coming, he is punishing Ronnie. Yeah, uh, in the couple of rounds before, uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan was asking the same questions of players. I'm going to play open, can you live up with me? Yeah. But Ali Carter is the most ry rhythmical and the fluent player uh, at the moment in the game. Uh, potting this, so many balls to that today that were important, but making them look very easy. Now, will Ronnie change his approach to see? This is the big question. Can, keep, uh, can you keep coming out playing as open and as attacking that? Like he, that? he may have gone into this match in the heat of the moment and played the first couple of frames and gone, no, I'm just going to go out for all-out attack. But I think it's a game plan. So can that game plan uh, pay off? He's the only player in the game that possibly could do it. And can Ali Carter withstand it? Well, I don't know who's going to win. I'm pretty sure you don't know who's going to win. <laughs> it's about time we need to get the players out onto the base. So Rob Walker, if you're ready, let's get them out there. Please welcome the five-time ranking event winner, Ali Carter! the seven-time Masters champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan. such a familiar lineup. These players have met in two crucible finals before. The spoils each time go into a Sullivan, but will it be third time lucky for Carter here at the Masters? He carries this good lead into the final session. Ten is the magic number that will get it done, and we've got a possible 11 more frames to play this evening. We've got those two world champions, Ken Doherty and Sean Murphy, all set and sitting pretty in the commentary box. Good evening, fellas. Enjoy it. Good evening, Hazel. Good evening, everybody. What an atmosphere we have here at the Alexandra Palace for the concluding session of the 50th edition of the Mr. Q Masters. Ken, we're in for something.